So as John mentioned, I am a neuroscientist based at Dartmouth where I direct a neuro laboratory where we use immersive VR to study the human brain and behavior. And today I'm going to tell you about a recent study from my lab in which we used gaze contingent rendering in virtual reality to investigate the limits of visual awareness. But before jumping into that work, I thought I'd start by reminding you why today a neuroscientist is standing up on a stage and effectively a tech conference. I'll start by saying just that the virtual reality field has always had a close relationship to neuroscience and vice versa. In particular, many developments relating to enhancing the reality of virtual experiences and virtual environments have been informed by neuroscience. So one famous example relates to lighting in your environment. It's been known from classic psychology experiments for a long time. But the brain has a prior that light sources in our environment come from the top left of the world. So as a result, the same shape will be perceived as either convex or concave simply by depending on whether the lighting in that image is coming from the top or the bottom of the environment. Knowing about this heuristic has informed design decisions about how to convey a realistic sense of space and depth in virtual environments. But of course, this relationship between VR and neuroscience is bi-directional. The advent of head-mounted virtual reality has opened many exciting new doors for neuroscience research. So prior to VR, the vast majority of what we've known about how humans perceive and how the brain represents the visual world came from studying behavioral and neural response, responses to images displayed on a computer like this, small little pieces of an environment. So the stimuli in our studies were at best these small little 2D snapshots of a real world environment, which can fit into a single field of view. Now this, of course, lacks a lot of the features that are essential about our real visual environment, which is, of course, a full 120 degrees binocular around us and extends even further, further than that, all the way around us, 360 degrees. And we explore this environment actively through head turns and body movements. All of these features and their impact on perception are something that we would ideally like to be studying in psychology and neuroscience, and VR has made that possible. So in my lab, we've been using immersive VR in combination with in-headset eye tracking and fMRI techniques to understand how people represent the visual world around them from an active first-person perspective. So for example, by combining head-mounted virtual reality with fMRI, we've been able to identify specific regions in the brain where the visual environment that falls immediately outside of your current field of view is constantly buffered and represented. We've also been able to bring this technology into the study of different kinds of psychiatric conditions, including autism, which en enables us to immerse a child into the types of multimodal sensory environments where some of their most prominent symptoms can be revealed, and helps us to be able to study what it is about these environments that creates these symptoms in daily life. But today I'm just going to tell you about one recent study from my lab in which we use VR to ask what might seem like a pretty basic, simple question about human perception. That question is simply, how much color are we aware of in our visual world? Now, this might seem like a basic question that we should know the answer to by this point in psychology, but actually there's a tremendous controversy surrounding this topic in psychology research. Color is obviously a hugely important part of our perceptual experience. When we look at the visual world around us, you feel that you're surrounded by a rich tapestry of color, spanning all portions of your visual field, from the farthest reaches of your visual periphery into the central portion of your visual gaze. And yet there are many reasons why we might think that in large part, this impression of a rich, full field, colorful world is potentially illusory. In particular, we might not be aware of as much color as we believe we are out in our visual periphery. So to start with, we know that color-sensitive cells in our retina fall off in their density out in the visual periphery. And we also know that our spatial attention, which dramatically limits what we can be aware of at any point in time, doesn't cover our entire visual field and provides a bottleneck on what we can be aware of in our environment. So in this study I'm going to tell you about today, we asked the simple question, how much color are people aware of out in their visual environments? And we did this using gaze contingent rendering and head-mounted VR. I'll just talk you through the study using a, a short video. 
So people in the study explored new 360 degrees environments just using a, a head-mounted display, an old Oculus Rift display, DK2. And they'll look around these environments from this active first-person perspective. And while they're exploring these environments, we have little eye trackers inside of these headsets so that we can keep track of where their central gaze is at any point in time. We're in a very severe drought at the moment, so that's why we're actually feeding. And then we use this information of where a person is looking at any point in time to enable us to change the visual world that they're experiencing as a function of where they are looking. So specifically in this study, we slowly remove color from their peripheral visual field using gaze contingent rendering so that we can measure the spatial point at which a person can first notice the absence of color out in their periphery. So here's an example of a trial from this kind of a study. You can see a person looking around a fun environment. Uh, this, is the, this is the Hobbit hole, this is the main one. And as the subject is looking around, this is a screen video from a real well, trial and a real person. We slowly desaturate their visual periphery, so only where they're looking at any point is fully in color. And this is a trial from a person who did not notice that effect at all when greater, only the central third of their visual field was left in color. But in this study, when we ran it on 200 different undergrads at Dartmouth, what we observed is that 80% of them didn't notice when that vast majority of their visual field was entirely in black and white. Only the central third was left in color. For the sake of time, I'll show you the smallest condition next, which is certainly the most provocative. Here's another example of a trial in which we remove color from everything but the central 10 degrees of a person's visual field. It's about this much that's left fully in color. The person's looking around this environment, and now, at this point in the trial, only the very center of their visual field is fully in color. So again, this is an example of a trial where a person didn't notice this effect at all. And here, again in our study, 30% of the people that we ran on this task were, would be fooled at even that small, small, small spatial limit. And of course, between these two, this affects scales uh, with annulus size. So just to hit this home, that last trial I showed you corresponds to approximately, approximately the size of your hand stretched out at arm's length in front of you, central 10 degrees of your visual field. So all in all, these results show and, and really convey the sense that in naturalistic viewing conditions, when we're looking around a real world environment, we are aware of surprisingly little color in our visual periphery. And our intuitive sense of a rich and colorful visual world is largely incorrect. This is the kind of insight into human psychology that has been made possible by the advent of head-mounted virtual reality and our opportunity to study visual perception in naturally behaving people in typical real world environments. Thanks.